What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new to the channel too and want to hit the subscribe button, that would help me out immensely. In this video, we'll finally be installing the remainder control arms from Serial 9. We officially now have the entire suspension catalog from Serial 9, introducing their fairly recent rear upper control arms. And on the bottom here we have the front upper control arms. These are seriously of superb quality, billet aluminum, Teflon hind joints, so dust doesn't intrude inside the joint there. These are Incredibly adjustable. I just went with the sports series. They do have an Oni series for the sports. You can adjust from zero to negative four degrees of camber. And for the Oni front arms, you can adjust negative four all the way down to negative eight degrees camber. But for me, I just want these to have them and I'm trying to get my front set of work Kiwamis to fit thus needing a little bit more camber to get them to fit if you saw the last video. These are a little bit more on the pricey side. This whole setup here ran me a little over $1,600, but again, you are paying for quality, the engineering, and the ease of use. As you can see here, you can adjust these inside the car. Of course, taking your wheel off easily by rotating this knob here with a Torx T55 counterclockwise or clockwise. And also they're labeled for you too. Boom. Well, believe me when I say this side says left side and they also have a QR code there you can scan for directions as well. So incredibly, incredibly stoked to have these installed. Thank you so much to your online for actually getting these out for me pretty quickly. These were on back ordered. I only had to wait, I believe, a week and a half, and their front arms were already in stock. Also, look what came today. My front and rear Spoon Sports subframe rigid collared set. I am running these on my Skyline, and they made a world of difference. Also installing these two on your car, you will need an alignment. But for me personally, I will not be installing these. I will be having my buddy's job, Eden Customs, doing the install for me, as well as installing the polyurethane motor mounts. So essentially what these do is line up your subframe to the chassis near perfect and eliminates all slop in the chassis as well so your alignment stays very true. So I definitely ruined my daily driver but the Mark II handles phenomenal and with these last bit of parts we have left to install and a nice alignment, the Mark II will definitely be my best handling vehicle. Also, a couple more things before we do the installation. My brother is selling his work VSKFs he had on his 350Z. Included our wheels, tires, and also these We Are Likewise Royal Titanium Lug Nuts. 20 of them. Lug pattern is 5 by 11, 4.3. Faces are bright white in perfect condition. Brand new hardware, new-ish polished lips. The fronts are 18 by 10 and a half J low disc. And the rears are going to be 18 by 11 and a half J low disc. Tires are 225, 45, and then 245, 45 in the rear. And immaculate condition, we are looking to get at least 36. Price is OBO, money definitely talks. Buy the wheels, sell the tires, or relip it to your specs. I was also able to source and buy a rare JDM part for the X100 Mark II. All series one owners 
want this part and I was very fortunate enough to hop on a deal from a homie, homie now up in Ireland. So I'm incredibly stoked on that. That part will be here within the next two weeks. Also reached out to another company to source me another part in Japan, which will be arriving in a container. Not too sure how long that's going to take, but I'm estimating anywhere between three to four months. But once we get these two parts in, Mark II is going to be almost exactly where I want it, exterior wise. And I got a ton of news, but for this video, I want to primarily focus on the installation of the Serial 9 control arms. I already got the Mark II on jack stands. I've got the fan to stay cool, some water to keep us hydrated. Stay hydrated, guys. Looking at the front suspension upper arm, nothing complex, honestly. We got our cotter pin that holds the castle nut in place of the thread. We'll go ahead and remove that. We'll then go ahead and separate the ball joint from the spindle with a ball joint separator tool. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my front coilover so I have easy access to my bolt here to the A-arm. Once the A-arm is out, we'll throw the sports front up control arm in and adjust the camber accordingly to get some good clearing fitment for the work Kawamis. I'm not honestly too worried about my weather liner. Should be okay, it doesn't hang down too much. And in terms of the lip to the front guard, I mean, it's already buckled in. That's how I got it, like this. So if we need to pull or roll this ever so slightly, I'm just gonna go ahead and do so. But I'm here to guide you every step of the way. OEM calcium nut is going to be a 17 millimeter ball joint separator, the Amazon special. I would recommend you support your LCA there because once you undo the upper arm from the spindle, it is going to drop pretty fast. Successfully got the coil over out. The bolts holding in the upper arm to the chassis are going to be 14 millimeters. And again, to those who are curious on what I'm running in terms of coilovers, BC Racing, custom coilovers. I just went with their standard series opposed to their extreme low series. Works for me, I went with custom spring rates from Swift running 18K front and 16K in the rear. So here I have the Serial 9 arm and the stock X100 arm laid out. In terms of the S9 arm, again, significantly lighter, built aluminum so it's stronger, weighs less than stock. All the weight on the stock arm is the upper portion here and the bushings, these bushings are actually in pretty good shape, but yours may or may not be corroded. These helm joints, heim joints are essentially solid, some more direct drive and feel. And again, we have adjustability inside the car, which is awesome. I just wanna show you how this works. I'm using a T55. Essentially, you'll just go ahead and put your Allen or your T55 in so and Notice how that slides out. That is so cool. It makes it significantly easy to adjust positive and negative camber. But again, you might want to get a tool to measure the threads. And also these locking nuts, they emphasize need to be torqued to at least 150 foot pounds. Holy smokes, everybody. We maxed out the arm and we maxed out the arm. This is crazy. Holy moly. So it's fully compressed. It's not touching tire, but it honestly looks like I'm going to have to roll this front guard. Like I mentioned in the previous clip, this thing's gassed. So I'm going to do it legit. Probably do it tomorrow, honestly. It is towing outward. So I'll start with adjusting toe minusculely. So I don't have to roll the guard, but Unless I stiffen the suspension, if I take a turn too tight, it's definitely going to rub, but goodness gracious, guys, that is beautiful. We got one and a half degrees of camber in the rear, up front, maybe seven and a half, negative eight, but it fits the wheel and it's perfect. 225, 40, 18, 18 by nine and a half, plus 20. Got all the Serial 9 goodies on there. But when you come to the back, guys, like... 
insane. My Lyman Tech is going to kill me because I actually just got the Mark II aligned not even two weeks ago and we got everything perfect dialed in, but now, now we're on that drift spec. Incredibly stoked. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the other side real quick, then play with the rolling, pulling of the front guards, back the Mark II out a couple of times so the, so the everything settles and from then on, we'll go ahead and knock out the rear upper control arms. But incredibly stoked how this looks. Let's just use some YouTube magic to get this done. All right, got the driver's side in. Just max this side out as well. All threads are good, everything bolted up, torque to spec. Gonna go ahead and throw on the Kiwami, put the Marchi back on the ground, see where it sits, and then adjust the toe angle accordingly. It's Definitely looking like it's towing out quite a bit. We'll just bring it in a couple revolutions until I get the Mark II realigned. But incredibly stoked to see how the driver's side is going to fit since this guard here is in perfect condition. Quickly testing lock to lock. We definitely achieved a little bit more angle with the lower offset wheels. Unfortunately, I am still rubbing on my X100 stock tension rod but I do know that Serial 9 is in the works of developing a much better, more efficient tension rod. So we'll just wait on that to be released before we buy an aftermarket one. Coming to the passenger side. Nothing rubs, so I definitely love that. Toe is definitely off and I am running IS outers and GS inner tie rods. So we have plenty of thread for adjustability. So let's go ahead and get the Mark II on the ground and see how she sits. Come on guys, that is too good. This side came out amazing because the driver's side guard is near perfect. Toe angle looks good on it. Whatever degree of negative camber this side is, it's literally perfect. It almost follows the body line. People say, go lower, go lower, which I definitely could, but I'd rather not risk it. We may have some potential clearance rubbing issues here at full lock for the most part. It's good. I'm gonna make a shirt that says Kiwami Boys because these are my all time favorite wheel. Red center caps with the red lugs is perfect. The energy of the Mark II is renewed. Put the Mark II in the driveway so I can get that nice front view and see all the negative camber, and I am obsessed. This looks so good, guys. Like, I'm literally obsessed with how the Mark II looks now. I like how the rear tucks the 18s, but up front, they look huge. But definitely the BN kit and the BN sports front guards will fix that. But still, the driver's side is the best side. That rear quarter angle shot also hits hard too. And one last look before I wrap this all up. So I did full lock counter and clockwise for the wheel to see what potential issues Future Me will be running into. Definitely going to be rubbing on the fender liner. Full lock, if I turn too fast and compress too much, we will be rubbing a little bit on the front lip here, which in the near future, probably tomorrow, I will go ahead and roll. But other than that, no weird issues with binding, no weird noises. Haven't gone on a full drive yet, but Future Me will Record that. Same with the passenger side. Everything is good besides this, of course. And huge shout out to FedEx for delivering my wheels with the utmost care. Thank you so much. But other than that, guys, I would say a very successful install. So on that note, everybody, that is going to conclude this portion of the video. I will be doing a separate video on the rears and on my own time tomorrow morning. I'll go ahead and do the fresh 
eyeball alignment. Really happy with how the setup came out, honestly. Turning my vision into reality has never felt so satisfying and incredibly stoked on the amount of progress we have made on the Mark II so far. I believe in the last video I told you guys it's already been a little over a year of ownership and in a couple of weeks it'll be one year when my girlfriend, my brother and I drove to California, Long Beach and picked up the Mark II at the port and we definitely transformed the Mark II from top to bottom and about 80% there before we're done. But enough of me rambling guys. Thank you so very much everybody for the continuous love and support. And if you're new to the channel too and wanna to hit the subscribe button, that would help me out immensely. And remember, aim high, drive flow. We'll catch you next video. Take care.